Hello there, this is Coda the Tyler, and welcome to Smart Coding. Is an abstraction great? Especially with interfaces. I mean, we can essentially create this little outline of what each component of a program will do, how those components will work together, and bam, we have a program. Yeah, that would be nice. While the appropriate use of abstraction is incredibly important for both the sake of the program and for the sanity of the programmer, it isn't a silver bullet. Sure, interfaces are incredibly powerful, but they aren't a program in and of themselves. All of those abstract methods need to be implemented using classes eventually, and that's going to require us getting down to the nitty-gritty details. We've already covered things like methods, objects, and classes, but we have yet to really dig into the smallest units of a program, variables. And no, these aren't the same variables as those in algebra. Instead of representing an unknown value we're trying to solve for, variables in a program instead store values so we can keep track of them. These two concepts are quite distinct in their function. And to be a bit more technical, a variable is more of a label given to a piece of data in the computer's memory. And then through this label, we can access that data. This trend of giving things names occurs quite often in imperative-esque languages, including Java. We give names to classes, to methods, to interfaces, to variables, and pretty much everything else. And you may be tempted to think this makes all of these things vaguely similar. When you think about it, couldn't a method just be considered a variable, but instead of holding a value, it just holds a list of instructions? This same analogy could be extended to classes and most everything else. All of those things have names and store data, so can't they just be considered the same thing? Well, they could be. I mean, all of these things are just ones and zeros in the end, and there are quite a few languages that take advantage of this idea. But this isn't really how Java works. Java doesn't treat all data equally. Methods are methods, classes are classes, and variables are variables. If it wasn't this way, there would really be no point in calling Java an object-oriented language. In fact, variables is sort of an unfair generalization to make. In reality, there are two types of data stored in variables in Java. Data types and objects. We've talked quite a bit about objects already. We know they are just instances of a class. When we store an object in a variable, we're just giving it a name, allowing us to actually use it and keep track of it. But we haven't talked at all about data types. Data types capture the most basic form of data in a program, numbers. Java has quite a few data types, but don't get too confused. They really all are just storing numbers. You may wonder why there can't just be one type of data, a number. Why do there need to be so many different types of numbers? After all, how different can numbers be? Well, we have to remember that computers work in binary, and they have a limited amount of memory to store all of these numbers. Data types allow us to specify what kind of number we want to work with, and to what scale. By kind of number, we really mean to ask, are you working with whole numbers, or are you working with fractional numbers? And by scale of number, we mean to ask, how large of numbers do you plan on working with? This is important because all numbers have to be stored in the computer's memory. If we say we're going to work with numbers ranging into the billions, when we're actually only going to be using numbers up to a few hundred, we're just reserving more space than we're ever going to use, and thereby wasting the computer's memory. This is one of the reasons for having data types. They allow us to clearly tell the computer how much memory we're going to be using. This allows us to be a bit more conservative with our memory usage than we'd otherwise be able to. But don't go too crazy with this. This sort of nitpicky memory business isn't incredibly important for most of the programs we'll work on. But you should be aware of what data types are, as they do come up quite a bit. And it's quite important to understand their characteristics and limitations. In this video, we learned about variables and data types. We saw variables are simply a label given to a particular piece of data in the computer's memory, so we can easily keep track of it and do with it what we need. We also learned that variables can store two primary types of data, objects and data types. Objects are just instances of a class, each having their own internal variables and methods. Whereas data types are the most basic piece of data in a program, numbers. 
Different data types handle numbers of different sizes and kinds, and this allows for a finer control of memory usage, especially in large programs using a huge quantity of numbers. That's it for this video. Be sure to check the description for some useful resources to learn more about variables and data types. If you learned something you didn't know, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you enjoy what I do and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Smart Coding.